All right, we'll do some suggestion box. Let's do it. I actually got it ready. I prepared for this. The one time that DSP has ever actually been prepared for something, I'm honestly impressed. And it's for the suggestion box nonetheless. Something that he very much wanted to get rid of as soon as possible, he's decided to bring back. I don't know why he thought that that was a good idea, but I'm glad that he did. Because the suggestion box segments are actually one of my favorite segments that DSP does. It's one of the few times that he actually has to address the real criticisms that he's receiving from people. Of course, he never takes it well and always has an excuse as to why he can't improve his content. But at least he has to face the reality to some extent. Enough to come up with those regarded ass excuses that he uses. And who among us doesn't enjoy a good display of mental gymnastics, especially when they're as top notch as they are coming from DSP. And it seems as though this sentiment is actually shared by the dents in his chat as well. You can see by the chat that's on screen right now how many of them are clamoring for the suggestion box. They want to see the suggestion box. So I guess big ups to the guy for giving people a segment that they actually want to see for once. Just in case that you guys wanted it. What's up Jade, good morning. Good to see you here, Jade. Welcome to the to the stream. I know yesterday you skipped all the React stuff. It's good to have you back today. All right. So we start off with a suggestion. I'm not going to read any names, so that way it avoids drama. But, I mean, this is a public post. Anyone could look it up if they wanted to. But I'm not going to read names on the stream just to avoid drama. All right? So, hello. Ready? So here comes the first suggestion. There's no need to recap the previous day on the podcast. We already have the Daily Wrap. And we're already off to a rip-roaring start. That is an actual criticism that I've had for a very long time about DSP's content. He recaps as soon as he starts the pre-stream, despite having a daily wrap at the end of every single day that he records and uploads to his YouTube channel. There's no reason to recap a recap. You can just move on with the content, DSP. If people actually care enough to get a recap, they would go watch the one that you uploaded. Imagine every day that you went to work, you had to meet with your boss at the end of the day to communicate where you were in your work, and then the following morning you had to come back in and re-explain to him everything that you just told him last night. I imagine that you would be pretty fed up with it rather quickly because it would quickly become apparent that that's a huge waste of everybody's time. But of course DSP is going to explain to us why this isn't the case and why he absolutely has to do a recap of a recap every single day. Well here's the thing, the daily wrap is a brief 5-10 to 10 minute video to very quickly recap what happened in the last day so if you missed it you go back and check it out. When I talk about the day before on the podcast, it's not the same segment. Yes, we're talking about the same topics, but it's more fleshed out. It gives a lot more supplementary info. Like, for example, today on this show, I explained the premise of DSP Throwback, all the work that's going into the standard videos that go there every day. Then I talked about the stream last night and how successful it was, why it's successful even though it's not giant views. I still consider it successful. And talking about the future of it and the poll. I, don't, I only talked about maybe one-third of that last night on The Daily Wrap, because The Daily Wrap is a fast video, meant to just recap the day, get out of here, right? But I have to wonder why any of that actually needs to be said on a recap, DSP. Why do you have to tell your viewers why you're able to do this show despite it not getting high views? Why for the 100th time do you have to re-explain the premise of DSP throwbacks? And all of the work that you aren't doing to make the channel operate the way that it does currently. This just doesn't seem like information that needs to be reiterated upon as often as you do, let alone every single day. And I'll cut DSP some slack here. Maybe he really does want to do an in-depth recap every day so that people know what he did on the previous stream because for some reason he thinks that that's vital to his business wouldn't the next logical conclusion to this feedback be to get rid of the daily wrap i mean really how many people are going to the daily wrap to see dsp recap the day when they could just tune in tomorrow and i guess the bigger question is actually who is the daily wrap for if you care that much about dsp that you're looking for a recap of the streams i would imagine that you were on the streams and if you weren't on the streams that day because you couldn't make it you could probably just catch the stream the next day where he's going to recap it in even greater detail. So exactly who is the Daily Wrap for? What target audience is he trying to hit with that? This is where you flesh it out for more in-depth discussion. And by the way, a lot of the times when we end up recapping what I did the day before here on the show, we end up getting into other topics or talking additionally about it. And that's good because it leads to other stuff. While there's no open discussion on the Daily Wrap, the Daily Wrap is just me talking done. Here on the podcast, it's different. There's back and forth. I see you guys responding live in the chat, and it allows me to have feedback and very critical input. That's why I like doing that on the show, okay? 
So that goes right along with my point that he should be getting rid of the daily rap rather than changing the pre-stream that he does every day, which if that's what he wants to do, sure, that sounds good to me. At least you're eliminating some sort of useless content that you've been putting out. Maybe he could utilize that time that he was spending every day doing the daily rap to do something else that his audience likes. Maybe he could even do a little overtime every once in a while since he's no longer doing the daily rap and make that much more progress in all of the games that he swears to God he's so far behind on all of the time. We all know that DSP watches detractor content to some extent he's made that very clear throughout the years so dsp if you happen to see this get rid of the daily rap it's useless it's for nobody you're wasting your time do anything else and it would be a better use of your time i promise obviously he's never going to take that advice because i'm just a damn dirty tractor dude but you can't say that i didn't try so i have, i understand what you're saying if you're someone who literally is sitting here watching all of my content you might be like well that's repetition well technically there's a small amount of repetition in there you're right but I definitely feel like doing it on the show and then adding to it and extrapolating upon it and getting your immediate feedback on it is way more meaningful than me just talking to myself on the Daily Wrap and leaving it at that, okay? <clears throat> here's the thing. Back in the day, you were right. I would agree with you. But here's the thing. Back in the day, I used to get tons of comments on videos. So I would do the, a, a video like the Daily Wrap, and i get 100 comments, and all of them would be constructive criticism and feedback. I don't get that anymore. Right now, I get most of my feedback right here on the stream. So if I don't mention something on the stream, I might never get feedback on it. So that's why I kind of have to talk about it on the stream the next day. I hope that makes sense. Okay. As always, it's very strange that DSP constantly needs this feedback at all times about every single piece of content that he does. He can't just seem to put out content that he likes for his channel. He's always got his tendrils out there feeling and making sure that the dents are still one hive mind that are loving everything that he's doing. That they are getting the maximum enjoyment out of his content so that he can maximize profits, obviously. Sound good? Sounds good to me. And by the way, Cat agrees. I also got to appreciate the sudden look into the past he did there. Well, back in the day, guys i used to get hundreds of comments and people giving me feedback on my videos and now not so much nobody comments on my videos you guys hint hint nudge nudge it's moments like these that make him look terrible because even if he didn't mean it that way even if he was just actually talking about how he doesn't receive comments that much anymore it comes across like he was hinting that people should be leaving more comments it just sounds slimy it sounds like he's trying to play some sort of angle and nobody appreciates being talked to like that Mentioning the schedule every podcast makes the first 10 to 15 minutes uninteresting. Well, first of all, I don't always do it at the first 10 to 15 minutes, but okay. Once at the start of the streaming week should be sufficient, plus schedule is here already, the schedule command. Another absolutely on-point banger of a criticism about DSP's content. The schedule segments are one of the worst pieces that he does. Nobody needs to know your schedule that often, DSP. Even if things do change, you don't need to do a full schedule segment every single day. But I'm starting to notice a pattern here, not just between these two suggestions, but also the suggestions from Suggestion Box Pass. It's that people are constantly calling him out for wasting everybody's time and repeating himself. For sitting around and wasting as much oxygen as possible possible every single day on the pre-stream so that he doesn't actually have more time to play video games. I don't think that that's a coincidence. I don't think that that's by happenstance that all of these people just so happen to be complaining about vaguely the same thing. And if DSP still had two brain cells smacking around in that gin-filled head of his, that he would actually see the same pattern everybody else is right now. But of course, this is DSP that we're talking about. We're not here to change. We're not here to actually accept criticism. We're here to cope and seethe and make up excuses as to why we can't be better. So let him try and justify why he has to re-explain the schedule every single day okay once at the start of the streaming week should be sufficient is completely wrong the schedule changes constantly around here most of the time the schedule that i have when i come back to work on friday ends up not being the schedule that we have by the end of the week case in point look at this week we thought that there was going to be dondoko island co-op all week guess what it's already done so now we got other things we need to figure out if i don't mention that on the podcast how will i figure out what you guys want for tuesday night you see? So of course the one time that he actually addresses the repetition in him telling you the schedule all of the time, there is actually a hiccup in the schedule for the week. But I want to note that that hiccup only exists because he allowed it to, because he decided that he didn't want to play Don Doko Island anymore. And I understand that I'm probably mispronouncing that, but I'm going to blame it on DSP. Sound good? But this rare exception that's happening right now with Like a Dragon is exactly that, a rare exception. The only other time that the schedule is subject to change is when streams don't do as well as he thinks they're going to do. And then he starts reshuffling 
reshuffling things and moving some games to night streams and other games to day streams because he's constantly chasing the highest dollar amount possible. So I guess the entire schedule situation can be blamed on him constantly chasing the money. It can be blamed on him not actually caring about the content that he's putting out and making a schedule that he can stick to because he has to maximize his profits. Because if he wasn't doing that, he'd be able to just tell you at the beginning of the week what games he wants to play, when he wants to play them, how long he wants to play them for, and that would be the end of the story. But that's too simple for DSP. DSP is not interested in keeping things simple. He loves making things as overly complicated as possible so that he can complain about it. Already, there's your, there's your evidence that it makes sense to do it on the show. Now, I understand, again, if you're someone who's here literally every day and you're an adamant watcher of all my content, oh, man, when he does the schedule, that's just repetition. Yes, but notice that sometimes the schedule changes. Sometimes I have to get your direct feedback on what I want to do for the schedule when it changes. This is critical to me. Again, the interaction that I get on the podcast is key constructive input and criticism that I use to improve my content every day. If I don't talk about these things on the podcast, I don't get feedback. Because again, not a lot of people leave comments on videos. If they did, that would be different. But that was different. Back in the day, I used to get tons of comments. Now I get almost none, right? So that's why it's critical to bring this stuff up on the show, okay? And he just brought up the comments not happening on his videos again. So I think he absolutely is playing an angle. He is trying to insinuate that you should be leaving comments. If you don't want to hear the schedule every single day on the stream, go leave a bunch of comments on all of the videos, I guess. Kind of seems like a shady way to be comment farming to me. But what do I know? I haven't been a full-time content creator like DSP for 13 years straight, dude. But I want to add that when there are hiccups in the schedule, when there are gaps that need to be filled because something fell through where they finished a game early, so now he has an open time slot. DSP really should fill that slot himself. He should make it a game that he wants to play because he wants to play it because that enjoyment shows through in the content. I know that I say that all the time when I do these videos, that that enjoyment shows through in the content, but it absolutely does. You can tell when content creators are making content that they don't want to make, that they're burned out doing it and they would much rather be somewhere else. And that is very much the case for DSP. I think if he gave himself the opportunity to make his own decisions for his stream and actually play a game that he wants to play, it might actually actually rejuvenate something in him if he was a normal style person. But of course, that's if he was normal style, which we all know that he's not. So of course, it wouldn't do anything and he would never even try it anyway because he has to make that money, dude. And the only way to make money, apparently, is to have people tell you what to do. Fair enough. And by the way, the schedule command, half the time I forget to update it because I'm, I'm old and stupid. <laughs> right? I'm getting old and senile at 41 years old. I'm about to be 42. If I forget all this stuff when I'm 41, can you imagine how much I'm going to forget when I'm 42? <laughs> there you go. So the final justification for why we have to do the schedule every single day is because he just can't be bothered to update the command in chat. Something that ideally would only need to be done once a week. He can't even be bothered to do that. Amazing. Simply amazing. Just a next level style streamer for sure. There's a reason this guy resides on level one and always has. 672 did a super chat. He says, everyone agrees that the schedule is redundant, but you? How dare you speak to me that way in a disrespectful tone? I will not permanently ban you from my chat. Get out of here, 672. There you go. You're gone. <laughs> it's funny because he thinks because he attached a super chat that he could just say whatever he wants. Well, you're absolutely right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, it worked for KK Kirk, so why wouldn't it work for 672? It seems to be just how DSP's chat works. If you send enough money, you get unbanned. You can just say whatever you want, whenever you want, and there's nothing that anybody, including the moderation team, can do about it. For those who don't know, 672 and I razz each other back and forth. It's not serious. We're just messing around. We, you know, it's funny, actually. I like having that little bit of camaraderie of razzing back and forth. Thank you, 672, for the super chat. <clears throat> I don't think that this is genuine razzing between 672 and DSP. I think that 672 very often does actually get under DSP's skin and he gets upset with him. He just lets him come back time and time again because like I said, he sends enough money that DSP can't turn him away. And I do believe that that was a genuine sentiment coming from 672. It is difficult to read the actual tone of a message being that it's just text, but that only makes me wonder why DSP thinks that 672 was joking when he was actually just saying the exact same thing the suggestion was saying so obviously people feel that way to some extent and maybe one of those people is 672 that would be assuming that 672 actually has a bone in his body though he's proven very much that that isn't the case though anybody that goes running back to anybody that talks to them the way that dsp talks to 672 is the biggest coward on the planet and if you need an example of that here you go in addition to all of that 
you know what, 672? Enjoy your fucking time out. You know, I've had enough of your fucking lip. I really have. He literally just in the chat, oh, it's too much work for you. Go fuck yourself. Here's what's too much work for you. Shutting your fucking lips. Because I've had enough. You've been like a, a sarcastic dick here. On and off. I've had enough of your shit. So sit out for 10 fucking minutes and come back and apologize publicly to me for being a dick. Thanks. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Lest someone take it seriously and think that we're actually at each other's throats. We're not. We're just joking around. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, oh, before we continue on with, uh, with any suggestions, a few more contributions have come in that I should shout out. So hold on a second here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this just kind of shows you how much DSP actually gives a shit about the suggestion box segment anyway. Because any other segment, whether that be DSPN or Phil's Day Off or whatever the segment is, he does not interrupt those segments in order to read shoutouts. But the suggestion box, oh, absolutely, dude. We have to distract as much as possible from reading actual criticism. Anime Slayer tipped a dollar, disappointed that the Dundoko co-op is over because we did hype it up and feeling that co-op should be two people playing together. Well, Dondoko can't be played together. And you're wrong, by the way. So what does the re really word co-op mean? What is it short for? Cooperation, correct? Two people working in tandem to accomplish a common goal. If that mode is not actually co-opable, and by co-opable, I mean that two people can play at the same time with two separate controllers, I really gotta ask why he was building it up that way then. Because everybody that I talked to and every comment that I saw thought the DSP was actually going to be playing a co-op game with his wife, that they were going to be playing together. Because that's how he was making it sound. He was advertising it as a co-op experience. But then we get to the final product and it's just her playing the game and him sitting there reading a bunch of chats the entire time. And he can sit here and play games and talk about oh what does co-op actually mean it stands for cooperation and we were cooperating because you were what in the same room looking at the same screen sometimes the vaguest use of the word cooperation possible because dsp didn't actually do anything at least on the first stream that's the only one that i could stomach watching the second one i didn't even take a glance at so what was the the co-op goal with dondoko number one to get further in that mode to unlock currency so when i go back to the main game we can continue on and buy better items and do what basically what we're going to do tonight go on like a spending spree that was the first goal the second goal was to essentially make entertaining content for you guys right so there's two goals the two co-op goals get get as far into the mode as possible and make entertaining content well because of cat's expertise in the mode we did turbo through it like if i just played that for myself that first night there was no way we would hit two stars in one night that never would have happened it's because she knew what she was doing she knew the things to build how to do it fast where to run around what to unlock quick she knew how to do that and it was her expertise in it that allowed us to succeed and that first night was very successful when it came to entertainment value the problem was <clears throat> night two completely flipped it on its head night two it became more boring it was the same grinding stuff over and over. Things weren't advancing as fast. We were getting tired. We were getting very bored with this and voice show. We were doing something else. And honestly, I could tell she was getting fatigued from doing it and wasn't having a good time. If we're not having a good time doing co-op, there's no point to doing it. But she knew exactly what the game mode entailed, DSP. She beat the entire thing on her own playthrough just the other day. So she was well aware of what the gameplay loop was going to be. She's well aware of the content that's in the game and all of the things that were going to happen from start to finish. If she wasn't up to the task, she should have communicated that to you so that you could communicate that to your audience before this entire thing happened, before she wage quit the stream. I just think it's shitty that this is something that you hyped up for weeks on end and actively complained that this game mode was too far into the story. Story, that it actually had a negative reflection on the game because it was so far just so you could quit it after two sessions just kind of seems like a letdown and a shitty thing to do for your audience that was excited to see it especially because like i said she was aware of what all of the content was being that she just 100 percented it on her own playthrough and you were sitting there watching her how many times dsp you were also familiar with the content you knew the gameplay that you were gonna have to endure when you did these co-op streams but yet you touted it the way you did you advertised it 
the way that you did to your audience got them excited and then just let them all down. And you're sitting here saying, oh, if we're not having fun doing the co-op, then why are we doing it at all? If you have that stance when it comes to playing games with your wife on a co-op stream, why don't you have a similar stance when it comes to your own gameplay? Because there's been plenty of games in the past that you didn't want to play, played anyway, and hated the entire time. I would imagine that would be a much easier thing to do if you had the company of someone that you enjoy talking to, or supposedly enjoy talking to. Because even the worst experiences can be made tolerable by having the company of somebody that you actually enjoy. You understand? That's We're not putting entertaining content out if we're not both of us not enjoying it. <clears throat> so it's much better to observe that, acknowledge it, and adjust for it than to force yourself to continue with something that no one's enjoying. I don't feel like if we had kept doing the Dundoko Island co-op that it would have been enjoyable for anyone because to us it would have been a boring grind and to the viewers we wouldn't have been very happy. We wouldn't, you know, we really if you ever, if you take a look, um, <clears throat> essentially it wasn't even that entertaining that second half of that stream because we were so tired and annoyed at the game that we weren't having fun even talking with the audience anymore. And that's not the audience's fault. That's just a situation. Right? I think that's the first time that I've ever actually heard him say that it's not the chat's fault that they weren't fun to engage with. And that sounds like a really strange thing to have to say out loud because no streamer should be telling their audience that they're the reason that they're not having fun on stream and not talking to the chat. But that's exactly on brand for DSP. He's constantly blaming his chat for not being engaging with him and not giving him anything to talk about. Failing to realize obviously that it's on him to make his stream entertaining and to have something to talk about. It's on him to be the entertainer entertainer and be entertaining. He completely misunderstands what his job is as an entertainer, as an online content creator. In life, you acknowledge when something is not going so well, and then you adjust for it. If you ignore the problem, then the problem just gets worse, bubbles up, and extrapolates, and then maybe blow up. Why do another two streams of Dundoko Island Co-op that we're not enjoying and you're not enjoying? What's the point, right? <laughs> so, it is co-op, by the way. It's not like it was only one person doing it, both times. I took over for her at one point and started doing the gameplay as well. Um, if you want to be super stickler to say, well, no, you two weren't cooperating in the gameplay, that's not the definition of what a co-op stream is, I hate to tell you. So I guess I stand corrected. He did, I guess, play the game at some point. I didn't actually see him with a controller in his hand until I saw the clips of her walking off the stream where he had to finish it up by himself. But at that point, it's purely because she wasn't on the stream anymore to play the game, so somebody had to. And I hate that he's sitting here still playing semantics with the word co-op, with the word cooperation. Because when it comes to video games, co-op very specifically means that two people can play at the same time. If you purchased a video game and on the back of the box, or I guess in the modern day on the store page description, it labeled the game as cooperative and then you played the game and there was not actually a game mode or any moment in the game where two people could play at the same time, they lied to you. Because if what DSP is saying is true when it comes to video games and the video game industry, every single game is co-op technically, because you could always have somebody come over to your house and play the game in the room with you. You could always have somebody come over and pass the controller back and forth and complete the same game together, but separately. But again, that's just not what the word means when it comes to video games. It means a very specific thing when you talk about video games. And I think that's why DSP very slightly threw in the word stream at the end of that there. He said that it was a co-op stream, not that it was co-op gameplay, but instead a co-op stream where he could then actually use the word cooperative and technically not be wrong, I guess leading me to only question why he's being this slimy with the people that pay his bills why he's going out of his way to deceive his chat but yeah i mean there's other games that have co-op gameplay we're just not doing them right now and again we've already discussed this that some of the games you guys suggested it takes two she's not interested in that at all she doesn't care about that game pal world she does not like it all she watched me play it once she was so bored she's like i would never want to do that um we're gonna eventually probably get to a point where we find stuff where cat will want to participate in but we just haven't found it yet now again we've dabbled with the idea that perhaps she'd like to come in as a guest commentator on a night when i'm just doing regular like a dragon right maybe one of these nights i'll be saying it's a like a dragon night and cat will just appear and say hey i'm here i just want to hang out and watch you play and do some commentary with you great she's always welcome to do that and she'll i'm sure she'll let me know if she wants to do that um that's how we'll approach it 
And I said this on one of the streams I did this past weekend, which one I can't remember. I did three of them. But he's putting her into a situation very similar to the 2018 Halloween special that he did. She's very clearly not made for commentary style content. She doesn't really have the personality for it. She's not well spoken. She doesn't have anything to say. She just kind of sits there like a bump on a log, which is totally okay if you're not trying to be an entertainer, if you're not trying to provide commentary. You can sit there and say nothing all you want, but when you get on a stream, you have to do something. And what she winds up doing is just watching the chat like a hawk and being offended by everything they say. And that's why she wound up leaving in 2018 on Halloween, because she didn't have anything interesting to say. She didn't have anything to add to the gameplay. She just came in, sat down, read a bunch of the chat, got offended and left. I don't know why DSP would want to put his wife in a similar situation. I think it would be a benefit to not only the stream, but her mental well-being to make her engage with the game and not have the ability to read chat like she wants to. Because she very clearly does still read the chat when she's on stream for the Q&As and for the co-op stream. She sees what these people are saying. The less time that you give her to read the chat, I think the better off she and DSP will in turn be. But yeah, we're not going to force anything. We're not going to force content that's not good because it's, it's just not going to be good content. It's going to be shit. We're not going to pretend like we're liking a mode we don't like. We're not going to be overly <laughs> with the audience when it's, it's boring. You know, we're not going to do that. We're, we're not fake people. We're not people who put on a happy face and act like a character on a stream to make a dollar. We're real people. That's the difference. I mean, maybe you're so used to streamers who go on, oh, we're doing co-op time. And the whole night, oh, it's happy rainbows and unicorns and everything's so great. Everyone's having a great time. That's not us. We're real people. You know, you're getting the real us on our streams. Not everything has to be unicorns, rainbows, and laughter for you to be real, DSP. You just have to be entertaining. And that's what you're making these other people sound like. Because even if they're not having fun with a game or whatever content that they're making, they're having fun with it. They are being entertaining. They're being engaged in the content despite it not being the most interesting thing to them. And I understand that not everybody can do that. Some people actually just don't have the capability to do that. I myself suffer from this very often in real life. If I'm not having a good time, I'm not pretending to be happy and I'm definitely not going to be entertaining while I'm miserable. But that's in real life when there's no audience to be entertained, when there's nobody watching. The only person that has to endure what's going on is you. The second the stream kicks on, the second that you go to make your content, you should be putting out entertaining content that people will want to watch because that is the entire point of making the content, is it not? So if you can't be bothered to try and be entertaining even though you're not having a good time with the game, sure, that's fine, but that doesn't lessen the blow that you hyped this up for weeks or even a month straight just for you to do it twice and then give up. Nothing is going to make that less shitty of a thing to do regardless of how bad the content actually was. Okay, continuing on. Let's see here. <clears throat> I'm trying to understand this. Let me read it. It was a $1.99 tip from anonymous tipper if you stop recapping on the show after the daily wrap it encourages people to watch those old videos why watch it if you tell us everything Okay, we're going back to the daily rap thing, I guess. But the guy's got a point nonetheless. Why would I bother watching the recap tonight if I could just wait till tomorrow and listen to you recap it in more detail then? Kind of seems like you're just uploading a video to not be watched. I feel like I said that earlier in the video, but it was so long ago now. How am I supposed to remember, dude? So what you're saying is, again, I'm trying to hammer this in to make sure I'm understanding it. Because on the next day's podcast, I'm telling you what happened the day before. You have no incentive to go watch it. I don't believe that at all, right? Why are you saying right after you said that you don't believe that at all? Why do you need my okay to not believe something? Also, I don't think that that person was talking about the videos as far as the gameplay goes. I mean, go watch the daily raps. But even if he was talking about the gameplay videos, there is still some sort of validity in that. If you do the daily rap and give very vague recaps and tell everybody to go watch the content, they're more inclined to do it. Rather than showing up on the pre-stream telling everybody in excruciating detail every single thing that you did yesterday, they might feel like they don't have to watch it anymore because you recapped it so well that they're caught up. But go ahead, DSP. Tell us why we're wrong, dumb, and stupid. That would like be saying, so last night there was a new episode of The Boys. Now you have absolutely no idea what's on the show. 
So you're not you're not checking it out yet. But then the next morning, everyone at the office is talking about last night's episode of The Boys and how exciting it was. So now you're enticed to go watch it. Right? If I hadn't mentioned today, wow, that retro react stream last night was really good of Heavy Rain, you might be like, nah, I'll check it out when I get a chance. But now I'm talking about it, I'm saying, wow, it was really good. The feedback is outstandingly positive. Everyone says they loved it, they want more. Vote for what you want next week. You're in tight. Oh my God, I want to go check it out now. Right? So I don't understand what you're saying there at all. I'm not literally sitting here for two hours in real time telling you moment by moment what happened. <laughs> right? If that was the case, that'd be different. But that's not what happened, so I don't understand what you're saying. I don't know. Let's continue on. But sometimes he does go into a play-by-play. -play. He does go into very specific details, especially if it's a game that he didn't make much progress in, like Baldur's Gate 3. He'll get on the pre-stream the following day and tell you all of the big fights that he got into, all of the characters that he talked to, the quests that he completed, and the area that he was in. And if he didn't make all that much progress, all of those details are kind of enough to feel like you don't need to watch it. In his example of The Boys, if it was a filler episode and people gave you a brief rundown, you kind of don't have to watch it because not a whole lot went on. And when it comes to DSP's gameplay, every episode is kind of like a filler episode. But that's going to do it for today's video. Shout out to everybody who watched the video, especially if you made it this far. A special big ups to all of my members. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Hopefully, I'll catch all of you guys in the next video. But until then, make sure that you check out other detractor content and dive deeper into that. Snortex. Ah!